Hey everyone, Mr. Mo here. Welcome to uh, the first episode of uh, what we call office hours. So office hours are, if, you, if you're ever in college, uh, office hours are the hours that professors or teachers and instructors make themselves available to the students to come into their office and get advice, uh, some strategies and different things about doing better in the class, okay? And so that's kind of what our office hours is modeled after. Okay, so the whole goal of office hours is really to focus on uh, math concepts, uh, things that we feel, uh, tools that we can give you to do better, perform better in mathematics. Okay, and so, so when we're thinking about math and where should we start, um, you know, it's since math is, is such a broad um, subject, we figured that we start in middle school because it turns out that that's really the area where most people start to. Uh, to do bad in math um, and really where their mo most weakness happens around this middle school math area. Okay, and so today is, is really more about a broad general topic, uh, word problems, but in other office hours and in other classes on the site, we're actually gonna touch on specific topics, specific math concepts and techniques that you can use to uh, do better in math, okay? And hopefully, uh, you know, as the weeks and months go on, We'll be able to build a little library of mathematics uh, videos and, and worksheets that you can do at home. All right. So, uh, so say all that to say that we're gonna today we're gonna talk about word problems. Okay. And the reason I chose word problems today is because that's really where a lot of people stumble when they get into math. Right. It turns out that word problems are actually more like real life problems. So me as an engineer, when we're doing problems, they typically come in the form of like what you would imagine to be like a word problem. Um, and so that's more like how you would actually use math in the real world. But for some reason, when they teach math, they don't use word problems as much as they should. OK, so they usually they show you how to do the equations and expressions and evaluate them and everything. But really, at the end of the day, you're using math to solve real world problems. And so um, and because a lot of people stumble with, with uh, word problems, we wanted to give you some techniques uh, to go into your toolkit so that you can understand and maybe uh, be able to tackle word problems a little bit better. Right. So I prepared a presentation and we're going to we're going to go over uh, one example problem and we'll talk about what a word problem is, some strategies Then we'll do an example problem. And then after uh, we're done, if you want to doesn't have to be today, but on the website, we'll post the uh, remaining example problems that you can go through and uh, figure out on your own. Okay. So let me pull up my, uh, um, my presentation here. And you all let me know if you can, if you can see it. Can you all see that? Okay. One second here, let me uh, get this back up. All right, I can see, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't see it for some reason, uh, the text wasn't posting. So, all right, since you all can see, let's, uh, so I got my iPad here, so I'm gonna be able to step through. Okay, so again, this is this is the office hours episode, and session one is solving word problems. All right, so um, I already talked about that. So let's see. So what is a word problem? Who can tell me in their own words what a word problem is? So go ahead and type it on the side there. What your what your thoughts are on what a word problem is? And I know you'll probably have to write a little bit of a sentence, but go ahead and say something in there in the chat box, tell me what you think a word problem is, and I'll read a few of them off. And if I can't see it like before, then I'll just, uh, does anybody want to come up on the screen? Say me, type me if you want to come up on the screen and tell me what a word problem is. Okay, hold on. Let me bring you up here. All 
Hey, King, how are you? Good. Okay, let's see. All right, so tell me, uh, what, what do you think a word problem is? Um, a word problem is like a math equation that is based, kind of based off of a real life event that can actually happen, and you have to add up or subtract or multiply so, sometimes items and get how much you need and stuff like that. Okay, good, good. Thanks for coming on. That was a good answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good. That was that was actually a great answer. And so let me go back here to the PowerPoint. So like King said, more or less is that word problems are real world problems expressed using words, that's obvious, right? And numbers that we must solve using math, okay? Um, so King said real world problems, that's the main thing, right? And then it's used words. So we have to figure out what's the best way to, uh, to solve these problems, right? Like I said, this is uh, word problems are one of those uh, math concepts or, or that a lot of people run into that uh, they can't figure out. And so we're going to put together some simple but effective strategies for you. Okay. So, so steps, what steps do we need to take to solve a word problem? Right. I always say that math is really, when you're learning math in school, you're really simply learning how, learning steps. Okay. So uh, a lot of times people try to focus on the concepts more so than the steps. And they kind of they kind of work together. So first thing, the strategy. Now, when we're talking about strategy, we're talking about what's your plan? What's the plan for solving uh, word problems? So basically, you need to turn the words that you get into numbers. Right. Sounds pretty simple. Right. So when we say we're turning words into numbers, that means we're turning those words into expressions and equations. Expressions are like if like one plus one is an expression, an equation is a is a full essentially expression so one plus one equals two is an equation so anything with like a uh, um an, an uh, equation or an equal sign in it is an equation okay so um and an expression is simply anything that involves really any numbers and any operations and when we say operations we're talking about multiplication addition subtraction division so forth okay so here's the four step process that we're going to use to tackle word problems. All right. So number one, and this may seem obvious, but read the entire problem first. Now, I've seen kids try to pick out parts and pieces of the word problem instead of simply just reading it through first. OK, read it through. Don't really try to make any um, any um, uh, try to write anything down or anything like that. Just try to read it through. And, and understand the problem. Okay. Just read it. All right. That's number one. Uh, and then number two, think. Okay. So read, then think. And so when we're thinking, we're, these are the questions we want to ask. Okay. What are they asking for? Right. At the end of the day, what do, what do we need to spit out so that we have the right answer or give them what they're asking for? Uh, then we want to understand what quantities do they already give me? Like there are typically other numbers in there, but what do those numbers mean? And then here's number three, how are they all related? Okay. So, um, you know, are these numbers, are they related somehow? Or are this is this number related to what we're talking about over here? So you want to start to now break down the, the uh, word problem. And then finally, <clears throat> excuse me, finally, we want to find operation keywords. So these are words that really translate into operations like uh, addition or subtraction. So if you say more than, uh, then that typically means that, uh, you know, there's some addition or subtraction involved. Total means uh, that we're trying to find like the addition, probably do some addition to find the total. Per uh, typically means we want to do some division uh, each as well. And so just different words in in the problem that tell us kind of what are some of the math operations that we need to do. Okay. And then we move to three, which is sketch. Now sketch, and, and I didn't put draw just by itself because 
you may not want to draw a picture. When I say sketch, you may want to just write down some numbers on a scrap piece of paper or something like that, right? So now we start to pull out those numbers from step number two. How are these numbers related? Can I draw a picture? I mean, if we're talking about oranges and apples or uh, somebody driving a distance, how can I represent that in a picture and then start to put my numbers in so that I can figure out um, how it all makes sense. And then finally, we want to solve, okay? So this is where we write the expression or the equation using the numbers that make sense or that we need, and then we finally solve it, okay? So this part is really, when it comes to a word problems, the solve part is the easiest part, right? Once we can get work through the first three and get to the equation or expression that we're looking for, then we typically know how to do the math piece that allows us to get the right answer, okay? So these are the steps, four steps, read, think, sketch, and solve. And I'll show you a little bit later on, a little worksheet, how I kind of break it down. But we're gonna go through an example problem here, okay? So here's the first step, read the problem, okay? And I'll read it and you read it to yourself too. It says, Justin is making snowballs to build a fort on winter break. Justin can build 15 snowballs in an hour, but two snowballs uh, melt every 15 minutes. So how long will it take him to build 210 snowballs? Okay, so just think about that a little bit. So we've read it through. Uh, let's read, I'll read it again. Justin is making snowballs to build a fort on winter break. Um, so this is kind of setting up the situation. So now you can kind of put Start putting a picture in your head, right? Uh, Justin, he can build 15 snowballs in an hour. In one hour, he can build 15 snowballs, but two snowballs melt every 15 minutes. So imagine kind of what that looks like in real life. Then say, then, then, then the last one is how long will it take him to build 210 snowballs, okay? So we've read it. I think we got a good grasp. Now let's go to think, okay? So what are they asking for, all right? So who can tell me what they're asking for? And hopefully I can see if you can type in this, like ultimately what, what do they wanna know? So go ahead and type that into uh, the chat box. How many snowballs he can make? Okay. Is it how many snowballs? Because they're saying he can make 210 snowballs. So what are they really asking for? Okay. How many minutes or is it, does it say minutes? The last sentence, it says, says what? It might be minutes, but it might be hours or seconds, right? That's right. So that's right. So we want to know how long it'll take to build 210 snowballs, okay? So, so we're looking for time here, right? So that's the quantity we're looking for. So it says, what are they asking for? So the first part is, is ultimately, oh, let me go back here. So how long, this is it right here, how long, okay? So that, that length is gonna be in time. It may be minutes, it may be hours. We don't know quite yet, right? So we wanna know how long it takes to build 210 snowballs, okay? So it's, so ne next it says, what quantities do they give me, okay? So they give me that he can make 15 snowballs in one hour, right? So uh, even though it's written as a word, that's still a number, right? An hour is one hour. And then we also have that, two snowballs melt every 15 minutes. So we got another quantity here, okay? So two more quantities, all right? So now we need to figure out the third question, how are these quantities related to each other, okay? And then finally, how can we piece together uh, an expression or an equation that allows us to solve uh, this word problem, okay? So let's go to the next one. All right, so this is where we kind of can do some sketching, okay? So uh, here's the, so let's see. If we, uh, we know that we can make, 
I guess I uh, hold on. All right, so we know that we can make 15 snowballs, right? And I won't draw all of them here. I'll just put 15, right? That represent 15 snowballs, right? In one hour, right? So we know in, in, in one hour, we can make 15 snowballs, right? So how many snowballs do we have after an hour? Do we have 15? Or do we have, no, that's right, why not? Why don't we have 15 after an hour? That's right, because because two of them melt, two of them melt every how many minutes? 15, that's right. So then, after an hour, if so, we can pretty much say after 15 minutes, see, these are melting, probably the ones that we made first, they're melting, so they can kind of go away. So after an hour, how many have melted? Eight, that's correct. So after an hour, how many do we have left? Is it nine? It's not, not nine, close. You see the equation I wrote? That's right, seven. That's right, so we have seven left, okay? So in one hour, you have seven snowballs, right? Because you can make 15, excuse the pen here. You can make 15, but then eight of them will melt, okay? So after an hour, you have seven, all right? Okay, so then it takes... So you can make seven snowballs in an hour. So now that we had that and we know we want to figure out how long does it take to make 210 snowballs, now we can go on over, um, now that we've drawn our sketch and we can create our little expression or equation, okay? So this is what it looks like, all right? Um, so I always try to put the, the, the units in here. Like, you know, I'm an engineer, so the units are always important. I know a lot of times in math, uh, when you're learning math, they don't tell you about the units, but those are very important, all right? So this is what our equation looks like, right? He can make seven snowballs in an hour. So you see, I got the units here, so seven. And then you multiply that, right? Because we're looking for how, how long or how much total time, right? So in, to make um 210 snowballs all right so we know that we need to multiply seven times some number here that gives us 210 okay and so what is that number who can give me that number if you solve this equation here you all know how to solve this equation what's how long what's the number of hours here 30 that's right that's exactly right so so really um, if we're doing this equation, we have seven times some number is equal to 210. And then we have this number here is equal to 210 divided by seven, right? So we bring the seven over to this side. And when we do that, because it's being multiplied, we divide it on both sides, really, but uh, we show it over here. And then this number right here is equal to 210 divided by 7, which is 30. Okay, so it takes us 30 hours to, uh, to make 210 snowballs, given all of the information in that, um, in the uh, word problem. Okay, so good job, good job. That's correct. You guys are, are, are really on it, okay? So um, to move on, let's talk about, so well, let me go back real quick so we can look at the four steps again, just as a, as a review. So read, read the entire problem first. Think, what are they asking for? What numbers or quantities do they already give me? Because they'll always, you can't figure it out if you don't have some numbers, right? Um, how are they all related? Like in, in our example problem, he makes, 15 snowballs in an hour, but then two melt. So you got to kind of imagine how that looks and then take some of the, the information they give you and start to figure out, well, 
Uh, they're telling us he can make 15 in an hour. So we probably, our answer is probably going to be in hours because they are talking about bigger numbers there versus minutes. I mean, we could turn 30 hours into minutes, but it'll be uh, a lot a larger quantity. Uh, and then think about how those numbers uh, are related to each other uh, from a math expression standpoint, okay? And then sketch, you see all on an, on how I went through the sketch here. Oh, it's, it's gone right now. But uh, draw a picture, okay? So the picture helps and you start to put the numbers down and then you can start figuring out what your equation or expressions look like. And that helps. I know a lot of kids try to do it all in their head. But believe me, it makes it, it makes it a lot easier if you actually take a picture, draw a picture, or sketch out the numbers on, on some scratch paper. And then finally, you write an expression or equation, and then you solve that using the, the skills that you already pretty much are familiar with, okay? So, uh, so for the dive deeper, now this is going, we'll probably post this later tonight or tomorrow, but if you go into office hours, uh, the class or the show on the website, you'll be able to access these. Um, they'll be there in a PDF form and then you can go through and maybe print them out if you wanted to or, or, or copy it onto a sheet of paper and then, um, and then solve them, okay? So this is kind of like your homework if you, if, you wanna, if you so choose to do it, okay? So here's problem number one and I'm just gonna read the problem, but take a look at how we, uh, we show how everything is laid out. Now you don't have to do this with every problem but I think it's a good way for the, you know, for practicing for us to kind of see how it's laid out. So we, we have the problem up here in the upper left, and then you see it says read, okay? Then we got think here, and then I'll put these questions here that you should ask yourself when you're thinking. I've put a blank space here for you to sketch out the drawings that you would need to solve this problem. And then down here, you can start to put your equations or expressions, and then use the area underneath here to actually solve it. Uh, step by step. Okay, so I'll just read these. We're not going to go through them, but um, if you so choose, you can go to the website and print these out or copy them, and then you can solve them as as a way to practice. Okay, so uh, Terry earned fifteen dollars and fifty six cents um, from washing cars, uh, twenty ninety nine from helping her sister in her homework, and twenty three seventy five from cleaning the house. She then bought a new dress for thirty five dollars. How much does Terry have left from what she earned after buying the dress? Okay, so what? actually, now that I'm reading this, we're going to try to step through this real quick because we got a couple minutes and uh, and see if we can uh, if we can get uh, you all to help me step through this. All right. So Terry, whoever Terry is, they earn this money from washing cars. Um, so now we're getting into. So we read it. Now we're thinking, what are they asking for? So what at the end of the day, what what do they want from us? What are they asking for? Anybody? What do they want to know in this problem? That's right. How much does she have left? Okay. So if we know that if they want to figure out how much she ha has left, then what operation are we going to use at some point? What mathematical operation if we're trying to figure out how much is left after something? Subtraction, that's right. Good, good. You all are on it. So subtraction, okay? So, but this is a two-step problem, right? So they give us all these other pro uh, quantities here, right? The 15, 56, 2375, 20.99. So what do we do with those? Because they're giving us those quantities too. How are they related? What do we do with those quantities? What do you think? Adam, that's right. That's right. Okay, so who has a uh, calculator there? 15.56. Plus, because we're, we're adding them because this is how much money she's earned from her different chores or activities, right? Who has a calculator? Do that for me. I'm old. I don't like to <laughs> do the long math. What is, what is that? Yeah, go ahead and add that up. Yeah. 
sixty dollars and thirty cent, right? I'm gonna take your word for it. Okay, so that's how much money she's earned in total, right? Now, to get how much is left, what do we do down here in the saw? What equation do we write? What equation do we write down here in the solve part? How do we finally get to how much she has left? Because that's where we're at now. Anybody? That's right. That's right. Zora, $60.30. Minus what she paid for the dress, which was $35. And what does that equal? Good. $25.30. Is that right? Yep. It sounds right to me. Good job. All right. So you guys got through that one uh, pretty easily, okay? Good job. And, and these problems will get progressively harder. OK, so this one is a little bit easier. Problems two and three are a little bit harder. OK, so actually, let's go through and you and you can see, like I said, how, you know, when we make this little um, chart here, table, whatever you want to call it, how it's easier, how we can kind of still refer back to the problem here. But then we've got a lot of room to do some of the pre work, the pre math work and then finally get to the final equation that we're looking for, okay? Uh, so I think now in seventh grade, you all are, are definitely doing two-step word problems um, where you have to do, you have to think about, okay, what do we, we do first? And then what do we do last to get this uh, this final, what are they asking for, okay? So, um, so that's problem number one. So we'll just read through problem two and three so that you kind of, uh, and, and again, these are going to get harder. So I, I, um, I, I'm anxious to see if you're able to get through this on your own. So here's problem number two. Uh, Mike's family donated three cases of soup for her school's uh, or his school's food drive. Each case had three rolls of soup, uh, three rolls of four soup cans. Each can contained 14.75 ounces of soup. How many ounces of soup did Mike's family donate in all? Okay, so I'm not going to go through that in detail. It's there. It'll be on the website. Um, like I said, I'm anxious to see you get through that. Uh, it's not that hard of a problem, but it does take some, some thinking, okay? Um, and then finally, uh, this one is a little bit harder here, and it involves fractions. And then you have to think about a little bit um, what are they asking for and how can I get that information. So this is where if you any of you have algebra, where you'll start to use some algebra, where you may want to use X or Y to represent an unknown number. Um, so this, this is probably the hardest problem here. So I'll read it quickly. In a bag full of small balls, one fourth of these balls are green, one eighth are blue, one twelfth are yellow, and the remaining 26 are white. How many balls are blue? Okay, so you got, there's several steps involved in this and it uses a little bit of algebra, okay? So um, good luck with that, okay? So that's that's it for, uh, close that out, the presentation. Um, so hopefully um, you guys did really well on that, uh, helping me step through those problems. I think I got a good group on here, so um, you all were really on it on everything, so uh, doing the math. And so hopefully, um, I gave you some tips there that you uh, have, weren't aware of previously, um, but even if you were, the, if you go through a lot of things about math is really practice, okay, um, because you have to understand the steps, all right, so, uh, and then it takes some thinking as well, okay. I know a lot of times I run into kids who want to uh, get through the problems quickly, um, but really just take your time, make sure you're thorough so that you have the, the correct answers. Um, so, uh, final question here before we sign off, are there any other topics 
in math that you all might be struggling with, fractions. And we won't go over them today, but this will help me kind of figure out what topics we'll tackle in the future. Uh, so fractions, anybody else? Mixed number fractions, okay. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fractions is a good topic. I mean, that's just something that you got to really nail down so that you're able to... Uh, um, <laughs> so that you're able to uh, advance in math. So um, thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Again, we'll be doing more of these uh, all focused on mathematics. So if you have any other topics you wanna talk about that you couldn't think about today, make sure you hit me up on the website, social.oasismatters.com. It's Club Oasis, the online STEM club, and uh, we'll get you some help, all right? So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you as always. See you later.